Hey everybody, Dr. Tom McNamara here. Welcome back to our course in trigonometry. In this video we are going to discuss horizontal and vertical translations for trig functions. So let's get right into it and look at an example. We are going to graph uh, this function right here, 4 plus 3 cosine pi x. Alright, so if we didn't have the 4 here, we actually know how to deal with this part right here. The amplitude of the function is 3, and then we can use this multiplier to help us get the period of the function. Okay, so let's start writing some of that down. So our amplitude is 3, And the period would be 2 pi over this multiplier right here. Remember that this multiplier is not the period, but it helps you get the period. Okay, so the period is 2. Now, as we discussed in our last video, adding on the outside of the function is going to move you in the vertical direction. Okay, it's going to move you up and down. Okay, so this is going to be a vertical shift of four units. Okay, so let's get all that together and graph this function. Okay, so a couple things I want you to notice here. Notice I am not devoting any space on my graph to stuff happening below the x-axis. We'll see why that is in a second. Okay, one, two, three, four. Okay, so I'm going to draw a dotted line here at y equals four. That's, of course, my y-axis. This is my x-axis. This is the midline for my function. Okay, the, the trig function, y equals four plus three cosine pi x, is going to be oscillating about that midline. So 1, 2, 3, 4. This is y equals 4. 5, 6, 7. Okay, now the period of my function, we, we saw that it's 2. And as before, you want to divide the period of your function into 4 units. To 4 equal pieces. All right, so we're dealing with the cosine function. So you remember the cosine function starts at the top of a cycle. Now he here's the thing. We've got to combine the vertical shift and the amplitude. Okay, the vertical shift tells us the midline. The amplitude tells us how far above or below the midline we're going to go. So my function is actually going to start out up here. Okay, three units above the midline, because it's a cosine function, it starts at the top. Hit the midline, we're going to bottom out, one, two, three units below the midline. Back to the midline, and then up to the top right here. We, once again, connect everything with our nice smooth curve. Okay, and this is a graph of one complete cycle of y equals four plus three cosine pi x. Okay, so things to remember, right from the graph, we can read off the vertical shift. Adding or subtracting outside is going to move you up or down. Okay, this is plus 4, so it's going to be 4 units up. Amplitude is 3, but we got to remember it's going to be 3 units above or below the midline. Okay, so notice that this function is reaching a maximum height of 7 units. Okay, now this is where we really get to refine our concept of amplitude. A lot of folks might think that amplitude is the highest number you see on the graph. That's not true. The amplitude is how far above or below the midline you go. Since our midline is 4, we go 3 units above, so the graph is re reaching a high point of 7. That's also why I didn't devote any space to area below the x-axis. It's not going below the x-axis. Okay, because midline of 4, 
the lowest we would go is three units below that midline. The lowest we go is y equals one. Okay, so we get this. We get this picture just by extracting the relevant information from that equation. Let's do a couple more examples here. Okay. So here's a another example here. Um, okay, so the vertical shift is 120. Okay, so that's the midline once again. Amplitude, 110. Okay, remember from our previous videos, the amplitude of a trig function will never be negative. To get the period, we do 2 pi over this multiplier. 2 pi over, pi over 12. How do you divide by a fraction? We remember that. You multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so strike, strike. So the period is 24. All right, so let's start putting things together here. So, I'm going to get our picture going here. Okay, now... Okay, so down here, on my x-axis, or I guess my t-axis, because the original function was in terms of t, I've got my period of 24 units carved up into four equal lengths. If you take 24 divided by 4, you get 6. Okay, now I need to think about my y-axis. The vertical shift is 120, the amplitude is 110. So I'm going to put that, oh, right about here. This is 120. And that's going to be my midline. My graph is going to oscillate about this midline. Okay, so up here, I'm going to mark off 230. And down here, I'm going to mark off 10 units. Okay, so notice what I got here. Notice I'm not putting tick marks all the way up the y-axis, okay? That'd be silly for a, a situation like this where we got 100, or actually I guess we've got 230 units to deal with. You're putting individual tick marks, you'll be sitting here all day, okay? Now how do I know to go up to 230? Well, vertical shift of 120, that's my midline. I can go this far either above or below the midline. If you go this far above, if you go 110 above, you're at 230. If you go 110 below, you're at 10. All right. Now, also notice this negative. That's going to flip the graph vertically. So ordinarily, cosine starts at the top of the cycle. We're flipped vertically. We're down here. Now we go to our midline. Up top right here. Back down to the midline. And then we bottom out. Okay, so we're going to connect these points with our nice smooth curve. Okay, and this is our graph for y equals 120 minus 110 cosine pi over 12t. Okay, so once again, right up here, we got this all summarized. The vertical shift, we're reading from there. The amplitude from the multiplier out front. The period we get from the coefficient of our variable. We put all that together and we get our picture. Okay, so the main thing to remember when we are dealing with these trig functions and you have a vertical shift, the vertical shift gives you the midline. Your amplitude tells you how far above or below the midline your graph will go. Okay, one more example, but here we're going to deal with a horizontal shift. Okay, remember, 
If you're adding or subtracting on the outside, as we mentioned in the last video, that's going to affect the graph in the vertical direction, the y-axis. If you're doing this on the inside, it's going to affect the x-axis. Okay, amplitude 1, period, 2 pi. Remember, multiplier out here tells you the amplitude. If you don't see anything out there, the multiplier is 1, so your amplitude is 1. Similarly, 1x, 2 pi over 1, that's your period, so your period is 2 pi. Horizontal shift, not applicable. Vertical shift, pi over 3 units right. Remember, subtracting in here moves the graph right. Okay, so I'm going to start drawing my picture. So I got this. Okay. Uh, let me start right there. Okay, so that's pi over 3. Now I need to go, well, let's say, one unit above and one unit below. So that's 1 and that's minus 1. Okay. Now down here I'm going to do a little calculation. Okay, cycle ends 2 pi plus pi over 3, right? So this is where my cycle is going to start. And then it's going to be a complete cycle is going to take 2 pi units. Okay, so this would be, it's looking like, uh, it'll do, do, do. So, 7 pi over 3, right, because if I do a common denominator here, this would be 6 pi over 3 plus pi over 3. Okay, so 7 pi over 3, I should divide that into four equal pieces. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so 7 pi over 3. Okay, so we're starting up top, down to the middle, bottom out, up here, over there. Once again, connecting with a nice smooth curve. I guess for completeness, I should um, figure out what these points are. Okay, so we remember that we took our period of 2 pi, we divided it into four pieces. Each of those pieces is pi over 2 units. So this first piece would be pi over 3, that's where we're starting, plus pi over 2, gets me to 5 pi over 6. Sorry, 5 pi over 6. For the next one, well, we're starting at 5 pi over 6, going to pi over 2. Going pi over 2 units to the right. Um, let me see here. Why, why is this the case? Well, 5 pi over 6 plus pi over 2, common denominator is 6. Hit this top and bottom with a 3. 5 plus 3 is 8. 8 pi over 6, or 4 pi over 3. And lastly, we would take the value that we just had, 8 pi over 6 plus pi over 2. Do this computation. Uh, one, so this is 11 pi over 6. All right, so there we've got the value of the tick marks there. Okay, so the key things are, if you're on the inside, your shift right or left will tell you where to start the graph of the complete cycle. Your period will tell you how far to go from that point. Okay? So once again, 
we are refining our idea of what period means. You might have gotten the impression that the period is the biggest number you see on the graph. Well, that's not true. The period is the length of a complete cycle. Okay, this graph starts at pi over 3, and then from there we go 2 pi units along your horizontal axis, your x-axis. And that's how we get our graph. Okay, so when you're graphing these functions, I would recommend you make a little list of the relevant information. And all this material you can read from the function's formula. Get the amplitude, period, horizontal and vertical shift. Now once you have all that, now you're ready to go and draw your picture. You put this information together into this visual representation, and you have everything you need to draw an accurate graph.